So today I just wanted to talk about the Mermail extra deck. I know I've been saying this a lot lately and I sound like a broken record, but Mermail as a deck is changing a lot over the next couple of months, next couple of weeks even. We have Dual Overload next with Needle Fiber. And right now I'm kind of at a struggle to figure out what to play in my personal Mermail extra deck. If we were to look back to say the summer of 2018 when it comes to Mermails, it seems like a lot of them had some pretty similar extra decks. We had Nightmare Goblin, we had... Uh, Galaxy Tomahawk, we had Firewall, Drag, we had all these crazy cards, and it seems like everybody played the extra link variant, and there was a lot less variants. Now with Mermail, we have a lot of going second variants, we have a lot of different going first variants. There's so many different builds out there, and it seems like everyone is playing something different, and it's hard to find one concise build like it was back in, you know, just two years ago. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, just the deck is very different than it is now, and that's kind of where my struggles are coming with the extra deck. So right now, as you can see here, this is my current, when I say current extra deck, I mean current as if Dual Overload was out. There are some proxies, as you guys know, we have Broke Boy Appaloosa, which is the Starfoil Deco Talker, and then um, Beat Cop is supposed to be Needle Fiber. Just the card's not out yet, so I don't have it. So this is my current Mermel extra deck, it's the same one from the deck profile. Did I make a deck profile for Master Roll 5? I don't even know if I did yet. I don't think I did, but I will when Needle Fiber actually comes out. And this is pretty much what I'm playing right now, but the struggles that I'm coming out with is when you play a card like Needle Fiber, I don't really, like, it's, I feel like I'm not using Needle Fiber to its full potential with my current extra deck, because right now I can bring out Desert Lotus, rip a card, and then with Desert Lotus, I don't have anything to synchro into. When I did that test hand video, I was proxying a Psyframe Lord Omega, which would be pretty cool in this extra deck, but I just don't have room with the current extra deck. So I broke down my extra deck into a few things, a few little categories. Hopefully it'll make sense. So right down here where we have Bahamut Shark and Cross Sheep and stuff like that, these are the extender type monsters. All of these pretty much bring out another monster, with the exception of Mud Dragon. Mud Dragon is just the institution target, which I guess qualifies as the extender. We have um, the things that the extenders bring out. I don't really know what to call these. We have Totally Awesome off of Hama Shark, of course, and then Desert Lotus off of the Needle Fiber. And then we have like the big guys, I guess you can call them. True King Calamities, Appaloosa, and the Abyss... What is this thing called again? Abyss Gaios. Uh, these are like the big boss negate type monsters. Obviously Abyss Gaios is probably the worst of the three, but I think it's still worth running. Then I have the utility cards up here. Boralode, Phoenix, Unicorn, Abyss Dweller. These are more situational cards. You don't typically go into these cards if you're going first turn one. Maybe you'll go into Phoenix and you Generic Link 2 for some combo if you get interrupted or go to Nightmare Unicorn if you need some sort of Generic Link 3. I don't know. But typically you don't go to these turn one in your standard combo unless like you know you're playing against like Orcus or something you want to go into Dweller. Typically these are the situational cards, the... What was the word I was looking for? You know what I mean. And then I have Abyss Alsea. I don't really know where to put this one. Uh, it's just Generic Link 2, which you kind of... I feel like this is the only card in my current extra deck that I feel like any Mermel variant has to play. And that's where my issue lies, or my problem lies, I should say, is I don't know what else to play. Because I really feel like the only card that is mandatory in any Mermel extra deck right now is at least one Abyss Alsea. Just because it's a Generic Link 2 water. And you can even argue that you can just play the Starway over it. I just like this one better because it has better interruptions. And I just don't know what else to play. So in terms of some other things that I have seen people play, one of the more popular things I've seen people play are the fish package. This seems to have gone down in popularity a little bit, it seems, I don't know. But the thing with the fish package, it plays a lot of synchros, and it plays Abyss Pike in the main deck, which is cool, is it requires a lot of extra deck space. So let's say I decide to play this, hypothetically. Let's say I decide to play this variant, right? I need to play these three synchros in my extra deck. What do I cut? That This is the issue that I'm having. I feel like this is the section of cards that are more likely to be cut, these four right here, because they're more utility options. But at the same time, if we look at Calamities, right? Calamities is a fantastic card. I think it's one of the best Floodgate monsters we have. But the issue I have with Calamities is I don't feel like I, it's the best option to go into it all the time. It's not that hard to go into it. You just pretty much need Teus and a way for a Link 2. That's pretty much all you need. And I feel like there's a lot of times where, like, I just don't want to go for this. But at the same time, I feel like in Salamangre, unless I go into this, I just lose. So I've been actually considering cutting this for some other things, which we'll talk about more later. So like I was saying, you know, I haven't tested this variant right now, but I really don't think this Synchro Heavy variant with the fish is that great with Needle Fiber. And then we have other cards that, like, I, I think are still pretty good. Like, I see people play Draco Sack. Draco Sack is great. It's an extender. It brings out two tokens, two level three tokens, which is actually really relevant. Helps you go into level eight Synchros with D.Va really really nice but the issue is when would i go into it and what would i cut I, I feel like the thing i really have to do is just test a lot of combos and see what fits 
this is more of just a discussion video to get your guys' ideas, see what you're playing, see what I'm playing, whatever. Then we have, you know, obviously Boral Sword. I see a lot of people play this card. Fantastic card. Don't get me wrong. I just really feel like it's redundant in Mermail because you have no issue whatsoever pouring out a ton of monsters with big attack that can attack twice in terms of Megalo. So you don't really need this card too much, in my opinion. And I have, like, some other random stuff, which I don't have too organized here. I should have probably done this a bit better. But we have Link Spider, which obviously means you would play Gen X Undyne in the main deck. And then we have, like, the Christian stuff. So I have seen some really cool stuff with the Christian cards, especially Christian Quan, the level 4 Synchro I don't have. And the thing you can do with those is you could, like, use Link Spider, uh, summon the controller, go into Needle Fiber, bring out some random tuner. And then you can synchro into Quan, which is level 4, and then Needle Fiber brings something else out, and you synchro with Quan into something else. And it seems really crazy, but again, the extra deck space. What, what do we cut? And then, like, some other... I think one of the best synchros, honestly, is Brianak. I think Brianak's probably one of the better synchros you could play, because it's really good going second. But the issue with that is it's only good going second. It's not good going first. And it doesn't really help with Needle Fiber too much, because it's level 6. Uh, and then some other generic stuff, like Red Ice Flare is cool. Link Rebo is nice. So are you generally... Super, I don't see too many people play it anymore. But um, I think it's still something worth considering. I mean, drawing four is just good. Uh, Kali Yuga is something that has seen some play in Marmel, not a lot. I, I came up, well, I didn't really come up with it, but I figured out that combo, so somebody else also figured it out, where you can summon this guy in Mermail, which, again, requires a lot of extra commitment, and I don't really think it's worth it right now. Then I have some other stuff. Like, I have Herald of the Arclight, and technically, you could summon this card in this deck. It's D.Va plus Heavy Infantry. And I do feel like once we get the deep sea support, we'll have other tuners, different levels and stuff like that. And I honestly feel like this card could see its way into a Mermel deck. But again, that's going to be farther down the line once we get Eternity Code in a little over a month. Right now, I'm really just focusing on the post-dual overload format pre-Eternity Code. I have some other like random stuff. Like I don't think Formula Synchron could really be played, but it's a cool card. Multiple Lacey if you're playing Extravagance going second. Uh, this card, which is actually getting reprinted in dual overload as an Ultra, and I just ordered a common like before it was announced. Uh, so this is a level 8 XC, which you can bring out obviously with Moulin Glacier and then Abyss Mander. The thing is, though, again, if you play this card, you have to play Abyss Mander and you have to play Calamity, so you can't get Calamities for it. What this does is basically you detach one and I think you banish one of your opponent's extra deck cards, and then you could, like, quick effect return it to the extra deck and pop a card on their field of the same type. So if you return an XC monster, you pop an XC, uh, stuff like that. So, and it's a water, which is nice. Uh, and we have, like, budget options. This is a card that I've seen people play over Boral Load, or Boral, not Boral Load, uh, what's the card called? Boral Store if they don't have it. I don't know why I put that there. And like other generic, like, Exceeds you could play, other Needle Fiber targets, other, again, generic Exceeds, generic Links. Um, if you wanna play the Marincis route, which I really don't think there's just space for it anymore. Uh, generic Links, multiple Toads, the Starboy like we talked about, the Marincis like we talked about, Synchros like we talked about, uh, Instant Fusion targets, besides just my Dragon or Rare Fish for an Extender. Um, I, I had to cut Millennium Eyes in this because there's just no room. I, I cut them for Needle Fiber and Desert Locust, and I still feel like they have a place in the deck. Uh, again, other Synchros for Needle Fiber. The Shadal variant, which is surprisingly not terrible. Uh, it's a going second variant, but, um, you know, it, it has some warrant. Is it still worth playing post Needle Fiber? I do not know. Uh, other Instant Fusion targets. I'll talk about this card more later, probably. And then multiple Bahamut Sharks. So, this is the issue that I'm having, right? What do I play? So, what do I want to play? So if you look at this card and I check what I have, I feel like the thing that is missing the most is another Synchro. Namely, and unfortunately I don't have this card, so I have to proxy it again as this um, world's field center. Cyframe Lord Omega. Because if you play Cyframe Lord Omega, as you saw in my test hand videos, there are some situations where it comes up where it's like, hey, you could on your opponent's turn use Desert Locust, and then if you hard made Toe this turn prior, bring back a swap frog or bring out a swap frog from your deck and then synchro to level eight and then boom pop a second card in that turn and if you mull in the turn prior there'll be four cards out of your opponent hand and if you have a totally awesome or that's one negate they're playing with two cards and you have at least one negate that seems really really good and i do feel like this uh, pretty much level eight synchros in general i should say they do come up enough they definitely do come up enough in this deck because of needle fiber and I think, honestly, what I'm going to do, and I'm going to do some test hands, um, once I actually settle on a build and take this build to locals after Needle Popper comes down and I actually get an Appaloosa, I think what I'm going to do is cut the Calamities, honestly. I'm going to cut the Calamities, and we're going to play a level 8 Synchro, most notably Cypher Lord Omega, or probably Cypher Lord Omega. And then here's the thing that I'm also thinking about, right? 
So this is all just testing. I don't really know if cutting needle fiber or cutting calamities is the right call, but I'm going to test it at my first locals playing needle fiber when it comes out. What I think I might also do though, is I think I might cut some of these cards, maybe even all of them, and just go heavy in on needle fiber and just pretty much play as much needle fiber stuff as I can just to test it out and see what we can play. So being that this is being cut, obviously I don't need to play Abyss Mander anymore, which, which again, leads to another problem. What do I cut Abyss Mander for? Uh, do I put in an Abyss Pike? Do I put in an Abyss Oshia? Those are really the two that I'm back and forth on. The thing with Abyss Oshia is Abyss Oshia, I, I honestly feel like Abyss Oshia is a better normal summon. That might sound weird, that might be uh, unpopular opinion, but the issue I have with Abyss Pike is it's really only good in your hand if you have Dragoons. Pike Dragoons, it's it's only good in your hand if you have dragoons and there's really not many good combos that pike starts that are like a three or four card combo with like one of like one for one or whatever so i, I don't know if i want to play this or pike or osia the thing is if i play pike though then i can play the extra fish stuff such as the water or monoceros and whatever but if i play the water or monoceros i need another fish because i don't i don't want to have only one main deck fish and pike and we just we just keep we just keep going in the circle of okay i fix this problem and i have another problem then i have another problem then i have another problem then <laughs> And then my deck just constantly changes and I don't know what to play. This is kind of what I've narrowed it down to after thinking for a little bit. Is either, so I'm probably going to keep the Phoenix in the Borload. Phoenix I think is just too generically good against a lot of random stuff to pop one back row card. I, I definitely do think it's still worth playing. And then I figured when it came down to Borload versus Unicorn, I decided to keep the Borload over Unicorn, mainly because Unicorn targets. That's really the biggest reason. And I feel like a lot of the times, if you can bring out Unicorn with the discard, you can probably make that extra material for Borload Dragon. I'm just a really big fan of Borload. It's got to be so, so many sticky situations, and it's something that I feel like I go into a lot. Is that a good or a bad thing? I don't know. But I don't. I honestly do not think I have ever summoned Unicorn <laughs> in, in this deck. And I've only been playing Unicorn since like September or so. I didn't have one before that and i haven't really played that much you know from september to now so i don't know if that's really a good indication but i think i'm gonna cut these two as weird as it sounds cutting dweller just doesn't feel right but at the same time what is it really good against in this meta orcus is kind of dead i feel like in salamangrate it's really not worth it too much against shadal it's okay i can actually it is pretty good against shadal and then against spiral i feel like it really doesn't do enough and again, I feel like if I'm playing into those decks and I'm going first, it's probably better off to put up other negates like Totally Awesome and have Abyss Alcio with a discard and stuff like that. So here's what I'm thinking. We either cut these two and play the Fish Boys. You really only need these two for the Fish Boys. There's some really cool and fun combos you can do, and these also up going second because they put more damage on board and begin to bore load, which is really, really nice. Or we play these two cards, but Hamachuck and another Toad, which helps going first. And since I'm playing the Frog Package and Bahamut Shark, I can also hard make Toad and make one off of Bahamut Shark, which makes going to multiple Toads easier. Or as you guys know, there's a lot of combos now floating around where they go into two Bahamut Sharks. So that's kind of what I'm going to test. I'm really just going to test these four and see which two I like better to play. And then I'll probably make a deck profile after Needle Fiber comes out and I actually play this deck and settle on something. I don't know what this video was about. It's really just me <laughs> talking about my extra deck struggles with the deck. Either way, let me think in the comments down below. What are you playing? What are you not playing? What do you think is good to play? What do you think is not good to play? What, also, if you let me know like what cards you're playing extra deck, please let me know what Mermel variant you're playing as well. Because like I said before, there's a huge difference between extra deck variants, depending on what your main deck is. Because obviously, if you're playing a pure going second deck, you're not going to play a similar extra deck to my variant. But if you're playing a going first variant, you might play it. Otherwise, I'm rambling. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. I'll see you all next time. And bye-bye.